that I was mixed, but like ethnically. So I didn't think it was as important as being mixed racially. Um, but I feel like if someone asked me what mixed means, it's like oh, it's so hard. <laughs> That's like, cause like you can be. There's so many options. Like it's not like just one little square that you can just check off. If that makes sense. Like it's just you can't. Mix is like whatever you want it to be. It's like like to be honest, I feel like everyone's mixed. Like I don't, I don't know, like how to explain that. Like there's no way you can't not be mixed. Like maybe like in like 5000 BC or something, before there was like inter relationships or something I, I don't know what to say like I just I'm very conscious about um, the privilege that I have and the spaces that I have privilege and the spaces that I don't have privilege and I know like when I should not speak and when I should speak but then again I shouldn't have I shouldn't feel that way like I shouldn't feel like I have to censor myself in order to you know, be in solidarity or, you know, speak up when I have to if I'm being oppressed in any way. And it, it sucks sometimes because it's like you have to wear different masks and you have to wear different hats and you kind of get tired of switching and you kind of get tired of wearing the mask. So when does it stop? Like, do we, are we just in one big show? Like, life is one big show and we're constantly switching roles, we're getting casted all the time and you always have to put on your best performance and then at one point what point does it stop being like theatrical and when when can you determine authenticity like how can you determine who is authentic and who isn't so it was just kind of confusing because when someone thinks your hair is a wig it's like why would you think i would wear a wig when i'm like a 6 year old going to school why would you think I am wearing a wig? Wigs sometimes move around in your hair unless you have a lot of bobby pins. But without, I have natural hair, aka, oh, well, oh, oh, by the way, so, um, this hair is horrible. So, one day when I go to the beach, it dries out. When I wash it 50 times, it still is kind of dry. When I use hairspray, it totally crunches up, and then it sticks together, and then when I go to the pool, the same thing happens, and then now it's still dry. And when you don't braid it or do a, a hairstyle with it um, and go to bed, it's crazy not it. So... When I moved here, I looked up the percentage of Native Americans in compared to the whole population, and in Australia, uh, in compared to the whole population, because I wanted to know why I never see anyone that's Native American here, and yet there is a lesser percentage of Indigenous people in Australia compared to the entire population, and yet I'm, there's always someone in my class who's Indigenous, or always like someone I I'd, I'd never go the day without seeing someone who was Indigenous, but here I can go I. I don't know when the last time I saw someone who was Native American, or if I would even know. My mother was the one who was like, I need to give you more black people to, to like look up to. Not that I didn't look up to my dad, I definitely look up to my dad. Um, but no, black women, I mean my mom was the one who was like, we're going to go see Alvin Ailey, she took me to The Lion King when I was eight years old, and always got me books about little African girls and and African American girls. There's one, um, uh, Amazing Grace, this little girl, she's black and she wants to be Peter Pan in the school play. And um, my mom was always reading us that, all of that stuff, because she knew that she couldn't, she couldn't be that 
role model for us. And no, and nobody else was around. I didn't, I didn't know any other black people. The thing is, the people who are this entitled and who don't understand other struggles that people have, for most of them, it's not their fault. Like they were raised with so much that they never had to realize it, and if they did, um, if they if they did, it's because they sought that out or because somebody actually sat them down and said, we need to talk about this clearly. But for most people, especially coming to college and you're 18 years old um, from, you know, your small town or just your small community that you come from, um, you know, they've only, most people have only known one thing their whole life. So, and for me, it's the complete opposite is what I've known and what I've seen. So that's why I was ignorant of ignorance, essentially. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and, and that's why, like, I have to remember uh, what, like, what's really hard for me, too, is a lot of times when people act that way, I immediately want to, like, get mad at them and um, write them off as a person, but it's like, it's like, no, they really didn't know any better, and it's not about, it's not about writing them off, it's about teaching them and inviting them into discussion, which is something I always forget, because I just immediately want to go into attacking them. So like, why don't we talk about the real shit? Because if I'm walking down the street and I'm feeling racism and I'm feeling these things, and I'm feeling homophobia and I'm feeling this, that's real, so why can't I talk about the realness? Because whether we talk about it or not, I'm gonna feel it. So can we talk about it? You feel more discomfort because then you have to really take the lens and look inside yourself and say, well, well how have I put this narrative on somebody that doesn't exist? And even with me, like, how can I take accountability on things that I put on other people that don't exist either? Because we all have done it in different ways.